from the Olympic Games. Well, I'll do that in a moment because here is the lineup for the first of our races. The uh, New Zealanders, that is Juliet Haig and Rebecca Scown in lane number four and they are the world champions for the past two seasons but we start right over on the far side with two terrific achievers maria laura avalo and gabriella best they qualified earlier in the week to go to london and now they're in the final that's excellent work australia's sarah tate and kate hornsey third in the world championships last season they go from two and then uh, helen glover and heather stanning who are chasing the new zealand world championships champions pretty hard they've been silver medalists for the past two seasons next to them are the world champions to their left Juliet Haig and Rebecca Scan remember the Kiwis have just arrived over here they weren't involved this particular crew in Belgrade and so this has been a very important barometer for them coming out of their winter which is in fact their summer down under and then uh, in lane number five Erin Confaro a former world champion with Suzanne Francia in this boat class. Uh, she's in the bow of that uh, United States pair. And closest to you, another two achievers. Only been really in international action at the highest class for two years. They were sixth in the world championships last year. Nadine Smith in the bow and Lee Ann Pers in the stroke seats. And lane six is closest to you on your television picture. So what a great race to start with, Mikhail. It's a very exciting race. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to how Argentina and South Africa will perform. It's, it's, it's two countries that we don't regularly see in the A finals, and I'm, I'm very happy to see the diversity. No Romanians, which is a bit of a surprise, and China, who also might have been in this. Well, they just recently, earlier this morning, won the B final. And two away from you, the Americans, not the sharpest of starts. Not the sharpest of starts, but we've seen the Americans not blast off the blocks. We were in Belgrade uh, three weeks ago, and it was the Americans with a slow start, and they just powered through the field in the, the second and the third 500 meters. It's uh, Great Britain with, uh, with a decent start, and that's something we saw in Belgrade as well. Uh, some lousy starts from Great Britain, so that's an improvement there. Well, talking to David Tanner, he said, don't worry. I mean, we're just at the beginning of the campaign and sharpening up on the starts is one of the things that you do as you progress through the World Cups. And of course, in the days after the last World Cup in Munich, leading up to the games. And the British will go away. They will not be in Great Britain. They will do what they normally do for a, a World Championship or Olympic. They will have their overseas camps and then come back into the UK as if it's normal. But that's a very, very solid start. They did 6.56.61 to uh, come into this. They were quicker than the Kiwis. You can see it just about in second place, three from the bottom of your picture, two from the bottom of the United States, closest to the South Africans, right on the far side, Argentina, decently up to the pace. Yes, Argentina right there as well. You can see the Great Britain pair wearing yellow bibs. That's indicating that they're the World Cup leaders. Um, and uh, right now they're leading as well. Uh, very impressive stuff. I like their rowing style. It's much more relaxed than the frantic rowing from New Zealand, which is a bit hasty. They're rushing forward, just uh, sl slowing the boat down in the recovery. That's not the way you should be doing it. But say 500 meters, we're still in the first part of the race. And there we are through uh, the first quarter there, and virtually a length to Great Britain over New Zealand. And that is a, a terrific performance. And of course, these two crews know each other really well. And you've got Heather standing, and then behind her, Helen Glover from, uh, well, originally Lossimuth for Heather Stanning, Truro down in the southwest of England. And uh, these two women, what they are producing now is terrific consistency. And you can see the, uh, just coming up there in lane number five, the Americans to buy with New Zealand for second place. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's between Great Britain, America, and the, and the New Zealand team for the medals. The other three teams are a bit out, but it's USA right now powering through, as I mentioned. That's what they love to do, come along in the second and third 500 meters. And they're quality athletes, the Americans. They're both Olympic gold medalists from the all-conquering American eights. And the eights is getting very, very exciting. Of course, they're towards the end of our program, but we'll see those today. And America go into second place. And the Kiwis in third. You can just see the Argentinians on the far side. They're vying, I think, for fourth place at the moment with the Australians. 
And uh, there's quite a gap between those front three crews. Yeah, I think Australia will be disappointed to learn that they're so far behind. The bronze last year at the World Championships, and right now they're over a boat length of clear water behind New Zealand, who's in third place right now. It was the United States just moving towards uh, the British uh, leaders right now, moving to slowly towards, and there's an overlap right now. So I think the fight's far from over. Absolutely, but I think what the uh, Americans and the Kiwis will be aware of, whether they like it or not, they have to move in this second quarter because of the start that the British had, which was, you know, virtually 100% excellent start, and they found that rhythm, and you see America solidly second, and there the Kiwis in third place, and then South Africa, that's a good effort from them. They're now vying with Australia. Argentina only gives it the three across the line there for fourth, fifth and sixth. They're having their own uh, fight at the moment. Yeah, but it looks like they're they're aware of the situation that they're not going to meddle anymore. So really good technique. It looks like they've responded to that challenge. That, that's good. They, they're, they're looking to their left. They're seeing New Zealand. They're seeing USA and they can challenge. They can challenge the, the upcoming groups. That's a good thing. Here are the Americans, Ellen Logan uh, in the red hat, and behind her, Erin uh, Cafaro, a uh, little bit more experienced. But as I say, both of these women are real achievers, real power. I mean, Ellen is tall, 188, and bring some 80 plus kilos of power into that stretch suit. Yeah, that's pure muscle. That's just, just a raw strength, and that's what they're pouring on right now, trying to get back to the Brits. And New Zealand still with that little bit frantic rowing style. I, I I think they still need to do some technical technical trainings to improve on their rowing because they were dominant in a sense last year and right now not so much. Yeah, but you know, there, as you know, there were 61 days to go, so they got time and they have the experience. They know what it's taking. You know, it's pretty rare to win a world championship. It's even harder to defend it. They've done that. And in fact, Juliet actually won it three times because she won it in uh, 2005 in Deerfield. Don't, don't be deceived by uh, by the parallax right now. It's still the Great Britain in front. We're having a, a cross view. As you can tell right now, Great Britain still leading by about a boat length, over a boat length, a little bit of clear water between them. USA in second, New Zealand still in third. Yeah, British have got 12 crews into the finals here, and they were the leaders in Belgrade on the points. So it's eight points, by the way, for winning a Samson rowing World Cup race, eight, and then it goes down, seven, six, five. And if you win the B final, you'll actually get a point for your country as well. But in this Olympic year, uh, that has less importance than it would do in another year, because this is all about the stepping stones. These are the final chapters in the book that hopefully will lead to a gold medal performance. And the British have looked outstanding here. I must say, this is one of the best performances. I was impressed with them in Belgrade. And look at that stroke rate, three strokes uh, less. They're using, they're doing things so much more economically. Yeah, efficiency. That's what the British rowing is all about. A rowing in 35, uh, long, smooth strokes. I really, really like their rowing. And it's uh, USA and New Zealand desperately trying to get back, but not really making an impact. Uh, Americans on the near side there, looking good to hold that second place. And actually looking straight down that one, holding their physical that boat really nicely. Yeah, Americans, they're not, they're not going to the sides of their boat, and that's what rowing in the pair is all about. You don't want to make extra movements. You don't want to reach too long and fall back too far. It's all about keeping your lines in that boat. Still, as we can tell, the Brits are coming right now to the line about 100 meters go still leading a nice push from the Americans but uh, New Zealand is out of the pace pushing on they've got an overlap with America the New Zealanders but this has been pillar to post young to take and Great Britain impressive winners of the women's pairs America in the silver medal position the Kiwis third on this occasion it could all be different in the Olympic Games, but that's a very good piece of information, not only for us, but of course, more importantly, for the coaches and their uh, teammates and team managers now. But uh, that's as good as it gets, and it's as good as I've seen from Helen Glover and Heather Stanning. That's a terrific performance. Yeah. Australia came in fourth, it was Argentina in fifth, and uh, the South Africans mirrored their performance from last year. We're sixth in Lucerne last year, sixth right now. So uh, they're doing well, but uh, still, if they want to improve to a medal, they need to do some, uh, some more work. Well, it's a barometer, and there are the world champions in the background. 
Juliet Hay from the West End Club, uh, Re Rebecca Scown from Wanganui, and well, they now know where they are because you can do the heats, you can do the semis, but now you know in the final where your opposition. Now have a look at this British start, three from the top of your picture, and it's excellent. Yeah, it's very, very good. It's so different from what we saw three weeks ago where they were just, I think they were surprised a little bit by, by how quick everyone blasted off. And they realized that, they realized they needed to improve that one, and they did right here in Lucerne. And um, what's also interesting, Michiel, is how these crews here are so meticulous in the detail of preparation. We've had a lot of boat chatter, you know, about how people have been going to their respective manufacturers and, uh, you know, more than just tailoring the boat, it's, you know, it's down to the, the final millimeter, the actual construction, the materials. Sometimes there's a difference, one one hundredth of a second, between the gold and the silver medal. And if that difference is countered by your boat, your preparation, looking for the details, and I'm not surprised that they're actually doing that. So there it is, the margin of victory, just under two seconds there. Great Britain ahead of the United States, almost four back to New Zealand, and then, well,